Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Catfish and Carp, and today we are climbing the food chain. Yes, that's right. We are going to be catching worms, which we're going to use to catch bluegill, which we're going to use to catch catfish. We're going to show you all the tips and tricks and how to do it at home because it's so easy and it is such an effective way to catch huge catfish. All right, guys, earthworms have to be one of the best bluegill baits around. It works just about anywhere, and it works with lots of fish, not just bluegill. Oh, there we go. Nice fatter one. Oh, oh, there's uh, there's another one. Whoa, two. Two, two, two decent ones, not huge. Oh, oh, oh that's a millipede. Yeah. Millipede. Oh, there we go. There's. There's that nice jumper. Yeah. Yeah. Big jumpers. Yeah, jump. they, yeah they, they'll jump. Oh yeah, good one, good one. Go get him, Tom. Oh, oh. <laughs> you way to chase him out, Tom. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, oh big one, big one. <laughs> there we go. There's finally a decent sized one. Look at that. It's so big. Yeah, you that's... guys scared him off and he came running towards me, literally. Oh, oh there we go. Yeah, there. He's like... Oh, there we go. There's one. Wait, oh, wait, is that poisonous, Miller? Is that oh. poisonous millipede right there? Oh yeah, that's a centipede. Don't touch that one. There, Uncle Dilly. Here we go. This is the centipede. These are these are the poisonous ones right there. there. What is that? Check, no, no, no. Check this out. Like what is that? Hey Tommy, I got one here for you when you get a chance. Hey, look at this. It's a little like sal see. It's a little salamander. See, he's got no tail. But see. Oh, there's a nice one. Yeah, there's another one, dude. Really? Right. Well, guys, we got plenty of worms. There's lots of different ways to catch worms. You can have worm farms, you can worm grunt, you can dig for them, whatever. I've got tons of videos about catching worms. All right, let's check our catch out. Let's see what we got. Yeah, that's pretty good. Got a pretty good catch there. Yeah, oh, they're getting away. They're making a break for it. One of the great things about catching your own earthworms as opposed to buying them is these are local worms that can survive the heat a lot better. The Canadian night crawlers you get at the bait stores, they'll die and get all slimy and nasty if they heat up too much. So when it's summer and it's hot, if you don't have a cooler, get local worms. Hey, tell me, what kind of bluegill rod you got there? It's a Doc Demon Deluxe. Yeah, do you like this rod? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it works really good. And we've got a number 14 hook right there. Tiny little eagle claw bait hook and a bobber and nothing else. I really like using the small hooks because you'll catch more fish, especially the ones that are hook shy and have seen a lot of bobbers and worms. Also, if you're fishing with kids and they get a hook in them, it's a lot better when it's a number 14 hook as opposed to a number four hook. So somebody who fishes with small children, trust me, smaller is better. Got ourselves a little bit of worm. The key is just using the right size chunk. So that's that's the ideal bait situation right there. A tiny piece of worm, lots of hook point exposed. That That's something perfect for a bluegill to suck right up and get hooked. We're gonna need about 15 or 18 fish for what we're planning on doing tonight. So we're gonna get some fish. All right, guys, let's see who can get the first fish here. Gotta set that hook, gotta set that hook. Pop it, Tom. Oh, I got one. Oh. Damn with the first fish. Nice, perfect bait size. Look at that, it's perfect. All right guys, I'm gonna show you how I like to keep my bait alive. This is a keep net here. See, look at this, it's a big long net. Just let it sit down there in the water and I'll tie it up to the dock and throw our fish in there, it keeps them alive. All right, so here we go, just drop them down there and keeps them alive and fresh in there. Right. Or her. Woo, that's Tommy's. There we go. Wow. All right, so we got about three bluegill in about 30 seconds. Not too bad. Oh, Shenley, pop him. Oh, that's a nice one. Reel him up, reel him up. Nice bluegill, Shenley. And you're using the Roddy Hunter combo. It's pink and it sparkles green and purple when you reel it. My wife loves that rod. Now, a lot of people complain that when they catch bluegill, they always swallow the hook. And we're using super tiny hooks and they're not swallowing them. The key is leaving plenty of hook point exposed when you bait the hook and setting the hook as soon as you get a bite and not sitting there and ignoring your bobber. On a, on a, on a, on a bluegill. Do you think Shenley's is fun? 
Dan here, he's got the normal Doc Demon. This is the regular version as opposed to the deluxe, which Tommy has. He's got the same thing, number 14 hook and a bobber. <laughs> <laughs> so right now I'm fishing with my Gyeongji, my traditional Korean fishing rod. Why? Because I can. Pull under the water. Hey, Dad! Dad! I just got a big pull! <laughs> Alright, nice little palm-sized bluegill. Perfect. We've been doing this about, oh, 30 minutes or so, and we've been tearing it up pretty darn good. So let's see how many fish we've got. We might be done. Well, there you go, guys. Got a lot of fish. We're gonna dump them in our boat's live well, and we're gonna go cat fishing. All right, there we go. Got about 18 of these bluegill. We're ready to go cat fishing. The sun is about to set. It's magic time. Catfish are best sunset and sunrise. Ship. Old Tommy here knows his business. If you want to see a video he did about how to catch catfish, I'll put a link in the description. All right, so the hardest part about catching catfish is knowing where to put your hook. Finding the right spot is super important. The water's high, it's muddy, it's rainy, uh, it's the fall time here. I'm thinking we're gonna wanna go shallower than we normally would. The fish are gonna be in water that normally is pretty shallow. So. I've got a spot in mind, uh, and we'll check it out and see if it works. If you can find where the shad are holding, you'll often find where the catfish are at. Shad between five to 10 feet, a lot of them out in these flats. So we're gonna go find some flats about five to 10 feet deep. <coughs> On the side of a big flat that's about five to eight feet deep, and we're gonna just shotgun this flat with live bluegill. See if we don't pick up a big flathead or something. Assuming like, watch this. Got a live bluegill hooked through the back. And we're gonna wing this sucker out here. This is a good size for both flatheads and channel catfish. But if you're targeting just big flatheads, you can go much bigger. Well, we got the rods all baited up and cast it out. And we're gonna sit here and wait a little bit longer than I normally would. It's the fall, it's nighttime, the fish are very active. So sitting and waiting for the fish to come to us is a lot more reasonable of a strategy in this situation. Normally I would wait 15, 20 minutes for a fish and if I don't get a bite, I'd move spots. But here I'm probably more likely to wait hour, hour and a half. So we'll see what happens. See it's moving, the line's moving. There you go, reel, 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 reel. Yeah, it's moving like a bigger one. Reel, reel, faster, 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 faster. Okay. Yeah, that's a flathead right there. Anymore. That's all right. That's all right. Just just oh, hold him like this. Oh, he's fighting. It's pulling like a flathead. As soon as you get him off the bottom, that's when they decide to start fighting you. Oh, there he, oh he's huge. Dang, yeah, that thing's scary. There you go, Dan. Nice net job. Oh, crap. That's it. Awesome. Lee, good job. <laughs> what do you think? Was that fun? Yeah. Was that pretty crazy? Yeah. Maybe. Oh, he was just barely hooked. Breath from 28. We're going to call it 28. All right, Shenley, congratulations on your first catfish. 28 pounds, not bad at all. Yeah, and he's heavy. Hi. Bye. Bye. <coughs> one, far left one. This one, far, really aggressive. Go for, no, don't set the hook, just go. Man, he's, I don't remember him fighting like this. Even that. Now it's like, oh! No. Dang, that no. thing looks bigger than mine. Oh, this one's a little bigger than Shenley's, actually. Much yellower texture. Yeah, yeah, they go from brown to yellow to speckled to all sorts of different fun colors. That is the last thing a lot of bluegill ever saw in their lives. He's got this row of pink teeth right there on his lips, and then back is his throat. You can see these little knobs with more pink teeth. Those are the crushers back there as well. Two sets of teeth. Uh, 35. It's close. I think oh, it's yours is heavier than mine. Well, let's keep at it. It's only all right, Dan, you like that? Was that fun? That was a good one. 35 pounds. I'm not sure if that's your biggest, but it's darn close if well, it's not. We'll have to go back and check the last video. Check the last video. Oh, often, you, often you'll see channel catfish that are yellow, but the way to know for sure is channel catfish have fork tails and flatheads have no fork in their tails. So blues, channels, forks, flatheads, no forks. In you go. There we go. You got to just reel it now, okay? okay. Okay, shine it out in the water. Shine it out in the water so I can see what's going on. Yeah, look at that. Oh look my at that. Gosh. That oh. one doesn't look. Okay, this guy looks like the biggest. Oh, in the corner of the mouth. How can you get some? Uncle Dan. That's in the 30s. 
that one. That Holy mackerel, it's like we caught the same fish. It's one of the reasons why you like big leads is they help set the hook in the right place. They prevent gut hooking. Using sufficiently big leads is really important to getting the hook in the corner of the mouth. These circle hooks work as, as they get pulled out of the fish's mouth, they go to the, they go to the corner. So that he's in there and as you pull it out, it goes to the corner like that. So having a lead that can provide enough resistance so that when the fish swims away, it pulls the hook to the corner mouth is really important. If the lead's too light, it won't do that and the fish will just swallow it and get it in its gut more often. All right. Like that. I do it. Goosh. Oh, look, his stomach came out. Uh, see how he, he's, he's puked a little bit? That's his stomach that's inside out. They can put it. In. See, watch this. Here, you can hear. So there you go. See? You see it disappear in there? Yeah. See, that's what it's looked like. But that's how they vomit. They turn their stomachs inside out when they want to vomit. And when you catch them, they usually puke. All right, Tommy. Good job, man. Good job. Another, another nice fish. Should we weigh him? Yeah. Let's weigh him. Is 32. Oh, middle one. 32. He's the middle guy. Petition. If it is. All right, Tom, you ready? Yeah. yeah. Bon voyage. Bon voyage. Yeah. All right, guys, let me show you my tackle box. Shimano makes these like rig wallets here and these little tackle binders. And I keep a pair of uh, uh, wire cutters, some leader material in here. And then I can keep all my pre tried hooks ready to go. And you can see some of these have the little rattles on them and some don't. And uh, I've got 8 aught and 10 aught circle hooks in here, all snelled up, ready to go. And then all the little bags of knickknacks I've got connected with this little binder ring you can get. Um, and I keep the swivels, the beads, the sliders, uh, the leads, everything on there. That's the only tackle box I really use for catfishing. Oh, you got one left, 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 left. Oh. Who's this, Shenley? This is Here, Shenley. Reel it, reel it first, reel Tommy. it first. Just Tommy. reel it hard. Yeah. What I tell you guys, these fish are in a lot more shallow. We're catching them up against the bank and out on the flats. But everything we've been catching them on, it's five feet or less. Oh. I no, it's a baby flathead. This is, this is what most people call a normal flathead. <laughs> <laughs> that helps. A real common problem with flatheads is they tend to get gut hooked. See there, the hook point is on the wall of his stomach, just inside the little sphincter in his throat. Okay, a lot of people will tell you cut the hook and just let it go out, which, you know, is better than killing it, but the best thing to do is to gently get the hook out. And the way you do that is sticking your hand down his throat. <laughs> See, look at that. Stomach, stomach goes back inside. He's all good. You smell them, and if you tore their stomach up, they'll stink to high heaven. 16 pounds. Not okay. bad. All right, let's put them back. Okay. Over here. Okay. I know a lot of you guys want to know what rods and reels I use. I've got the Whisker Seeker Chad Ferguson series medium heavy power uh, rods. Uh, I believe these are seven and a half footers and uh, one-piece rods and you can see they handle these 30 pounders just great uh, i've got the okuma trios 55s reels on here i like them but about every two years the pinion and gear breaks in them i tend to wear them out on these big fishes uh, and after two years that i usually have to replace them the line i'm using is 40 pound spider wire blue camo and uh, I like the higher visibility line just so I can see when the flatheads swim to the left or right with my, my line. It doesn't seem to bother the fish at all, especially not at night. Okay, reel of that loaded up. Okay, heads up. All right, there you go. That is your first channel cat. And that so is cute. not a bad one. That's, that's about an average size for here, but that's a, it's a good healthy size channel catfish. Four and a half. You've I think we were up to 112 me. pounds, so that puts us at 116 pounds. Okay, here we go. We pulled up on this spot around 7 o'clock. It's now a little before 9, and we've caught five fish, four flatheads, and one channel catfish, totaling 116 pounds of fish in two hours. So not too bad, not too bad. And uh, we had some nice flatheads, so plenty of, plenty of nice flatheads. It was a good day, uh, definitely. But... That's how it is in the fall, and uh, don't 
don't let the weather put you off. It's it's drizzling rain, it's flood conditions, it's a little bit nasty, but man, the fishing's great when it's like this sometimes. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more great videos from the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel, don't forget to click, click subscribe. subscribe. Nailed it. <laughs> we put out new videos every Saturday morning. Thanks for watching.